When you think of Iowa Hawkeyes football, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Now, I think of some of the greatest defense I've ever seen in college football, but I also think of some of the greatest punts I've ever seen in college football. In fact, if you look at the all-time punting leaders in college football, you're going to see Iowa a lot. And that's not because they're breeding punters in Iowa. That's a volume stat. Iowa historically has an insane defense and a pitiful <laughs> offense. Now, granted, the game does say they have an 84 offense and an 85 defense, but I'm not so sure I buy it. My goal today is to turn the Iowa Hawkeyes into an offensive juggernaut while maintaining the defensive integrity. And of course, that should all end with a national championship. Let's begin. I'm gonna be a recruiter head coach. Iowa is a very Big Ten school. Great defense and a slow ground and pound offense. If we're gonna switch this over to Air Raid, we're gonna need to fully revamp the offense. It's gonna take some years and a lot of good recruiting. I'll be running TCU's Air Raid offensive playbook and we'll stick to Iowa's base 4-3 defense. My offensive aggressiveness set to 100, and I'm head coach Jackie Robinson, in honor of Cooper DeGene. <laughs> Who could forget the historic 2004 Cheez-Its Bowl? Now keep in mind, it's not like I'm stepping into a poor program. We're a four-star. We were 10-4 and four in 2021, 8-5 and five in 2022, and 10-4 and in 2023. So while this may not be as difficult as Old Dominion was, I've got a tough task in flipping this entire offense. First things first, let's take a look at the roster. You'll notice that most of our studs are not only seniors, but of course on the defensive side. We've got Jay Higgins, 94 overall middle linebacker, Sebastian Castro, 92, Nick Jackson, 90. Got a 90 overall strong safety, that's the first junior, as well as D-tackle Aaron Graves, also a junior, and Addison Ostranga, junior back backup tight end. I also do think of a ton of tight end talent when I think of Iowa, TJ Hawkinson, George Kittle, Sam Laporta, and we're not going to go away from that. We'll continue to have awesome tight ends. And while this team is great right now, we are incredibly senior top heavy. That's generally how it's going to be, but there is a serious lack of younger talent on this team. And most importantly, the wide receiver room is pitiful. We are not running air raid with a 75, a 73, a 70, and a 67. I think Old Dominion's wide receiver room was better than this. This is, of course, where recruiting and the transfer portal are going to come in big. Our halfback, LaShawn Williams, is an 80 overall, but once again, a senior. Offensive line is really solid. We do need to maintain that. I'll be looking for some really good pass protecting tackles. I think that'll be an important factor. And defensively, we still have to pay attention and maintain Iowa's defense, but I think that's going to be a lot easier since we're starting off with such incredible base talent. I think the biggest thing we need to pay attention to is wide receiver prospects. The fourth best QB in the nation is most interested in Iowa right now, but guess what? Fabian Merling, the five-star, is a scrambler. I'd like to do that in the future, but if I'm going air raid, the throwing stats are going to be significantly more important. I need a field general. Or an improviser. Clay Wilkins, four-star quarterback from South Bend, Indiana, is an improviser. And there is just tons of wide receiver talent that we can look at. Let's throw most of these solid guys on the board. Can't neglect other positions either. Before I do any real recruiting, though, let's check out the recruiter skill tree. I've never used this one before, but it looks very, very powerful, especially in offline. For example, receiving game, wide receiver, tight end, where I'm going to start. Wide receivers and tight ends take less time to fully scout, a bonus to wide receivers and tight ends, increased weekly recruiting hours, and increased starting interest. This is definitely going to be a strong skill tree. We'll start here by taking them less time to fully scout. Matthew Booker, not a gem, but he does look like a solid wide receiver. I don't know that I'll dump too much time into this guy. Holy shit! <laughs> I knew this was possible, but I've never personally seen it. Glenn Brazil from Overland Park, deep threat wide receiver, 100, 100 speed. I literally have seen this on Twitter. I've never personally seen it. Naturally, he's a fucking gem. Oh my God. This guy's a monster. He's got shifty and layout, which layout is an insanely good ability. Shifty is solid. He's got platinum, the natural, and clear. Oh my God, this guy's a freak. This is our number one right now. He's already interested, but we're being slightly beat out right now. We Oh, we gotta go for this kid. 100 speed wide receiver. Are you kidding? Prince is not a gem, but once again, we really just need to build depth. We don't need the absolute absolute best wide receivers available, but we do need some good wide receivers. Pat Capers looks okay, 93 speed, 90 excel. Still gotta work on the offensive line. Here's Cam Topkins, a left tackle. with some solid interest already. It helps to be a four-star program, so you still hold Dominion. Clay Wilkins is that quarterback I was looking at. He does have really solid overall stats. They're not incredible. His medium accuracy leaves a little bit to be desired, but he has mobile dead eye, great ability, and mental field general. We're gonna want him too. At the top of my list right now is Glenn Brazil. I've never had a 100 speed wide receiver. I would love 
love to have this dude. Now, our current quarterback is Cade McNamara, who was previously J.J. McCarthy's backup at Michigan. Both our first two quarterbacks are seniors, and neither of them, frankly, are that good. We have a redshirt fresh Marco Lanes, a field general, so worst case scenario, I could start to develop him. Let's take a look at Iowa's schedule. Very easy first four games. Midwest, Iowa State, Troy, and Minnesota. Then we go into the shoe to take on Ohio State. That's going to be a big game. But as far as the Big Ten is concerned, this is actually a very easy schedule. We dodge Michigan. We dodge Oregon. We dodge USC. Some of these teams will be a test. We'll see how good UCLA is. But as far as the first year schedule, I think Ohio State's only the real team in our way. Let's sim up to Ohio State and see how we're looking. So out the gates, I sent the house at Glen Brazil. We are absolutely in the top runners right now. This is the number one guy I want. <laughs> that would be that would just be so much fun. Make him a redshirt freshman, have four years of this freak show. We did just get a Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week award in week two. That's Jay Higgins. He has a 94 overall. That's the anchor. Now comes the question of Clay Wilkins, the quarterback. He's narrowing down his teams were up there, but Notre Dame's got us beat right now. I'm going to schedule a visit for us hosting Northwestern. Hopefully we can have a really, really good game there. And we'll show off our coach prestige since he's interested in that we've got an a plus there i've also spent some more skill points in the recruiter skill tree working on quarterback wide receiver o-line and halfback but there is an issue those first four games did not go as expected in fact the only win we got was against the fcs midwest we lost a close game to iowa state a close game to troy and a close game to minnesota all by a field goal and frankly i think i might have changed my offensive scheme too quick i'm throwing this team right into tcu air raid and we're not built for it not only that but ohio state's gone up in the rankings up to first in the nation, while Washington is now 13th at 5-0, and and Wisconsin is 16th. His first season is not going as anticipated, and this might be a setback. Despite that, I want to see how this program's playing. What better way to test our steel than against the best team in the nation? Ohio State is a menace. I shouldn't be shocked that they're first in the nation. The Buckeyes looking to remain undefeated. Iowa's just looking for a win. Brutus, I don't want to hear it, bro. Not today. The game kicks off. Iowa, first to score. It's 3-3. Three to three. No way our first win comes here. Another field goal. 13-3, Iowa. 13-10. 16-10. No way. I don't understand this game. Are we really going to beat the best team in the nation? It's 36 to 17 Iowa. After losing three straight, is three minutes away from beating the best team in the nation. Not only that, that's 36 points for Iowa. That's basically what they score in a whole season. Ohio State's going to need to score and score fast. They throw, caught. Well, that's how you do it right there. Ohio State's looking to march this down the field. They'll check it down low, tackled in bounds. That clock is ticking, gentlemen. Now, this might be a crazy statement, but if we beat the best team in the nation and we continue to have a good season, could we still get a playoff berth? I know we have three losses already, but imagine we were nine and three with wins against Ohio State and other ranked opponents. It's possible. And that's a laser, but it's broken up. Nice defense. Lots of stars on this Iowa defense. And there's our stud middle linebacker getting juked out. But down he goes anyway. Third and six. Two-minute warning coming up here. Ohio State looking to the sidelines. Do they get the snap off? They do. Quick throw. Caught. A huge late touchdown for Ohio State. But this might be what we call too little too late. Here's a huge onside kick. Ohio State does have all three timeouts. But if we can recover this. Fumbled but still recovered. Oh, he muffed it, but he still got it. Nice work. Expect to see a lot of runs here. There's LaShawn Williams, handoff up the middle. A good five yards. Timeout, Ohio State. A first down seals this game up. We went into the shoe and did this. Are you crazy? Fake jet zone, another two yards. And I think the, cheer the cheerleaders are clueless. Ladies, you're about to drop this game at home to the Hawkeyes. Let's put the banners down for a second. Third and three, there's a handoff up the middle. Absolutely swallowed up. And Iowa. <laughs> hey, well, we did switch up this offense. Oh, we're going for it. In no man's land, McNamara into our tight end, caught. Ballsy ass play call, but guess what? That leads to victory formation, something we haven't seen a lot this season. In the shoe against the Buckeyes. That's crazy. 36 to 24, a big shocker. Cade McNamara, 400 passing yards and three touchdowns. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we just gotta give TCU air raid some time. Ohio State doing the wobble of shame here. Are you doing OHIO? You just lost by 12 to unranked Iowa. What are we doing? Will Howard looked really, really solid too, but it's just so awesome to see an Iowa quarterback going 400 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. I think that this is a sign of really good things to come, but the fact that we have so many losses, it's it's very obvious we're not there yet. Caleb Brown had 103, Kamari Moulton had 108, 
Seth Anderson 74. And it was actually our fourth string wide receiver. And then of course our tight end who ended up with those touchdowns. Impressive. Defensively a sack out of Aaron Graves. Um, I mean, you're holding Ohio State to 24 is actually really impressive. So defense did their job today. Yes, we just needed a little pressure. Iowa with a huge win. Checking back in on recruiting. Glenn Brazil still loves Iowa. So that's huge. And once again, we got that big visit coming for Clay Wilkins. We gotta win the Northwestern game if we wanna pick Clay Wilkins up. Shadur Sanders wins player of the week. Glenn Brazil is so close to committing to Iowa. We'll also be able to pick up Prince. He's not the greatest, but I need more wide receivers. We got Leo Hansen. I wanted a big wide receiver. Leo Hansen is six foot five, 198. He's not a gem. He's very slow, actually. 83 speed, 94 jumping. But once again, I'll just take some guys if we can get them. Cassius Osamele also wants Notre Dame. I'll schedule him a visit against Wisconsin. That's a ranked opponent. Show them the facility. We did pick up some steam, though, after beating Michigan State and Washington. Here's that big game against Northwestern, who is 0-4 in the Big Ten and 2-5. and so that's huge. We're also three and one in the Big Ten with that big win over Ohio State. We're fourth in the Big Ten right now. We actually have a chance at playing in the Big Ten Championship. We have Indiana on the schedule too. It's doable. Woo! Hey, that tells me something. Glenn Brazil commits to Iowa. The 100 speed. 92 Excel wide receiver. This is the very cornerstone of the air raid. And it starts right here with Glenn Brazil. Although I will probably redshirt him his freshman year. Although now I'm worried about Clay. Where's the boy Clay? He must not have decided yet. So we do. We win that game against Northwestern, which is huge. No. Clay Wilkins signed to Notre Dame before his vi Oh, that sucks. We might even need the transfer portal now for a quarterback. I mean, Fabian Merling is still really interested in us? This is the scrambler. Okay, Fabian Merling is a five-star scrambler, and I didn't get Clay. Is this worth it? He has 88 short accuracy. 81 medium? Wait, your throw stats are nasty. Option King extender. He has gold off platform. I might actually go for this, dude. Hold up. Let's send the house. And once you narrow down those top five, let's talk. Maybe I, I'll take a five-star quarterback. It's not the archetype I was looking for, but I'm going to schedule a visit here on a bye week for this dude. I'll show him the trophies in Iowa. He's a 6'2 physical wide receiver, Lamar Jones. He's very interested. 86 speed, 92 jumping. He's not a generational talent, but hey, that's what Glenn Brazil is for. The dopamine rush of seeing a wide receiver committed to Iowa. It's pretty exciting right now. I won't lie. Leo Hansen. Nate Stein Kuhler's also coming. Caesar Khalil. We, okay, we have four wide receivers, three of those three stars. None of these guys were spectacular like Brazil, but I happen to have all of them. Jay Higgins, another Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week. I'm gonna miss you, man. I will. Oh! Oh, 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 oh! We did get the Big Ten Championship. Dude, to start that season that rocky, but beat Ohio State was so massive. We're taking on the Oregon Ducks. And we're 14th in the nation. We're 9-3 and three on the season. Ooh, Monte Catalina, free safety committed. And it's the Big Ten Championship hosting Oregon. If we win this game, I think we'll be in the college football playoffs. Deontay Craig, senior left end, Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week. But I, I still think we lost. Jalen Miro, big shocker here. 2024 Heisman, 41 touchdowns, 8 interceptions. Drew so oh my God, of course, because we're still Iowa. We're still winning special teams awards. We get the Lou Groza award for the best kicker. Dude, you're telling me the 16th team in the nation is doing the LA Bowl hosted by Gronk. Stop. So we're nine to four. We lost to Oregon in the Big Ten Championship. We would have gone to the playoffs if we'd won that game. I'm actually offended that we just got that bowl game against Nevada. So we better win that game. Guys, we won the Gronk Bowl. Hey, a 10 and four season to start us out after starting the season one and three. It's a good first year. Max Namero was 26 and nine, 3,700 yards. It's not that impressive, but realistically, he did not have a lot of threats and he made do with what he had. So you can see our top three wide receivers. Those are our receiving threats and our tight end relative involved, halfback involved in the passing game, and on the ground, we were very ineffective, to be honest. McNamara scrambled a good amount, so maybe that scrambler quarterback is the right call. Three-star D tackle commit. We also just went up to a four-and-a-half-star program. You want to see an absolute nightmare, though? Players leaving. 94 senior going pro in the first round. Castro goes in the second round. Lake, oh my gosh. We just sent six dudes to the NFL, and another 15 graduated. It's a huge hit to this roster. Fabian Merling, this this is that five-star scrambling quarterback. We are still his number one school. I don't think there's much more I can do. I guess bring him in on a bye week, show him our trophy room. We're scheduling him a visit. This should put us right over the hump. We're already in the lead. Fabian Merling. He's from Des Moines, Iowa. Like, of course this dude wants to play for the Hawkeyes. Transfer Portal has got some studs too. Transfer Portal already paying off. Picked up a few three stars that were available. Jared Schneider, Brett McGarrigal. Schedule some more visits. That recruiting skill tree is actually so overpowered. Here's this 
this three-star slot corner who's interested in Washington, I can give him additional hours. He's more interested off the bat, and I just scheduled a visit. I'm probably gonna get all these dudes. That is OP. It's only OP if you're offline, though. We got Joe, baby. Three-star D tackle. Jack Walsh, we did get him. The four-star right guard. That's a big pickup. Odaluga comes through. We're gonna need some middle linebacker replacements after my stud just left. And there's the exact slot corner I was talking about. Tyrod Ellington signs as well. Dude, Fabian Merling refuses to pick. This guy is just leaving us out to dry, but I mean, we have him. I'm gonna send the house anyway, just to be like ultra safe, but we have him. Boom! Big time! This is my first time ever signing a five-star in Dynasty, so this is really cool. Fabian Merling, he's from Des Moines, Iowa, so that helps. This guy originally was not on my radar. He was really interested in Iowa, but he was a scrambling quarterback. We also get to Pape, the right end. Joe Brunner, another four-star guard. Three-star free safety, Patterson. And a three-star free safety, Jamison Patton. <laughs> Fabian Merling waited until the transfer portal to make his decision, but he ends up going to Iowa, which is amazing. <laughs> Dom Carnegie, we're starting the second season. We got another five star. Dom Carnegie, Chicago Heights, Illinois. I still don't like fully understand. Some of these dudes wait all year and some dudes just auto sign. All right, headed into year two. Let's take a look at the roster. Damn, holy shit. Fabian Merling. The freshman. Dude is a 78 overall. As a freshman, he's got crazy abilities. Magician, mobile resistance, option king, extender, and gold off platform. He's got impact dev trait. 6'3", 224. This guy's a freak. It's also good that his accuracies aren't like horrible. I was scared his accuracies would be horrible. 79 deep, 88 short, 81 medium. This guy's really good. So the sophomore, Kamari Moulton, is our new starting back. He's got 94 speed. And obviously the kicker. Okay, so Caleb Brown's up to an 89 overall. So very good for him. He progressed actually like crazy. That's wild. This is the man I'm looking for. Glenn Brazil. 75 overall as a freshman, 99 speed, and 92 acceleration. Holy shit. Glenn Brazil. <laughs> Wait, he's supposed to have 100 speed though? 100? I do wonder how that works. There's there's no metric in the game to have over 99. So I feel like having 100 speed is like, it's cool on paper. I don't think he actually outruns 99 speed guys. Platinum tier the natural. So he's, it doesn't matter what the weather is. Glenn Brazil showing out. And then layout is a really, really good ability. So is shifty. So is takeoff. I honestly don't anticipate this being a great season. I'm going to stay on top of recruiting. Let us progress. We've got Oregon, Penn State, USC. And we're keeping our eyes on a few guys. I like Amari Baptiste. This guy looks sick. Four-star left outside linebacker. I'll finish up his scouting. 83 speed, 85 excel. He's not insane, but I like him. He's a four-star receiver, Dewan Elkins, who looks okay. Wouldn't mind drafting a halfback as well. Here is a gem. Frederick Jones, 90 speed, 92 excel, receiving back. And we're Iowa, we still have to have really good tight ends, right? Here's Stanley Vines, hoping we can pick him up as well. Not a gem, but he is a six foot six, 86 speed tight end. Four star right guard, I gotta keep that O-line strong, baby. Cole Shelley, Ed Sauer, right tackle. Oh my God, are we number one in the nation? Seth Anderson just had three touchdowns against Wisconsin. I simmed to the first poll. We're first in the nation at six and one. Holy shit, this is not Old Dominion, this is awesome. All right, on the schedule, we beat Iowa State, Florida Atlantic, Penn State, lost to Oregon. So now we're 0-2 against Oregon, so that's not fun. But it was a very close game, lost by a point. Beat Michigan State, beat Minnesota, beat Wisconsin, and now we're taking on USC. What is so funny about that is we are literally fourth in the Big Ten, and yet we're first in the nation. Look, I don't make the rules. I don't. It's been a really solid recruiting season. We got our top four guys, Baptiste, Wake, Jackson, and Jeffrey. Keeping the O-line strong, there weren't a lot of wide receivers that I liked, so it's good that we kind of focused on them last season. We did get Kyrie Gage, the receiving back. I didn't spend too many points on him, but he looks solid. Got Frederick Jones. That was the gem halfback, who's now verbally committed. Stanley Vines, Markel Pryor. Well, it's a Big Ten matchup. We're taking on 10th of the nation, USC. If we win this game, we're going to the playoffs this year, for sure. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but it's fair to say that the TCU Air Raid playbook is doing well for the Hawkeyes. Certainly helps that we signed a five-star quarterback freshman too. All right, I'm gonna jump ahead to the end of this game and let's see if this is a close one here. Now we're at USC. We start with seven. USC responds with seven. I think we just punted. We did. Ooh, 14 to seven. <laughs> 14 to seven, 20 seconds left. Clock is ticking. One timeout for Iowa. First and goal. Fabian Merling, he's a scrambler. <laughs> the five-star freshman. Fabian Merling, huge touchdown right there to tie this ball game up. Oh, this is going to be such a good game. 28 to 28, it's Iowa ball. We've got to get across the 50, there's a handoff. 
Yikes, Kamari Moulton, the sophomore, can't go anywhere. Well, this is why we switched to Air Raid. We know what to do here. Got trips on the right, two on the left, third and seven. Huge down. Fabian Merling! Sacked. That's gonna be a punt out of Iowa. Iowa fans, look away. Or maybe, actually, you know what? If you're an Iowa fan, you probably love this. Yeah! Highlight of the year. Big butt. Almost in scoring range already. At least we have three timeouts here. Laser beam middle, broken up. This is almost no man's land. Like they might go for this even if it's fourth down. Second and 10, offensive line holds well. Small pickup, it's third and six. USC with a huge play here, third and six. Big throw, he lays out for it and catches it. Oh, generic white tight end, you dog. Miller Moss might be putting together a game winning drive against number one Iowa right now. We still might get a playoff game. Laser, boom! I love how hard we're hitting, we're knocking out passes. Second and 10, I will say this ain't a gimme field goal either. It's a 55 yard field goal for a college kicker. USC, laser, end zone! Ooh, what a Ball. Is that Zachariah Branch? Is he still in the league in year two? I don't know how old he is. Regardless, that was a beautiful catch. USC goes up by seven. Stadium is loud in USC. Fabian Merling throws. Easy catch out of bounds. Merling is 270 yards and four touchdowns. This might be the best freshman in the nation. We could have redshirted him here too. Just to squeeze those years out of him, but I kind of like what we got going here. Second and six, clock's ticking. Merling's flushed out, throws still. Could have picked up more with his feet. That's gotta be a timeout, Iowa. No, third and one, we're so close to that first down. He almost could run this, no. Merling, unloads, caught. Broken tackle, out of bounds. That's the junior Ostrenga. Probably an 85 overall now, he's good. First and 10, clock ticks, retaining all timeouts. Check down to the hatback, call that timeout, Iowa. Iowa! What are we hoarding our timeouts for? There's no bonus points at the end of the game. Second and five. Unloads middle, caught! And Iowa takes the timeout. I just gotta trust my coach. I gotta trust Jackie Robinson. First and 10, 17 seconds left from the 25. Merling, unloads, caught! Timeout! Timeout! Come on, Hawkeyes! 28 to 35, trips left. Unloads, caught! Big touchdown for the Hawkeyes. And we gotta teach you guys some new celebrations. There's no way you go for two, right? This crowd is stunned. Kayla Brown, now a senior, 90 overall wide receiver. The huge catch and we're, we're, we're sending this to OT. <gasps> timeout, uh, timeout Iowa, we're going for two. We came out to kick and we rethought it. It's a handoff. What? Onside kicking it. Oh my god, what are we doing? Onside kick Iowa instantly recovered, trying to strip it out. Holy shit. In one of the ballsiest plays of the college football season, Iowa calls the timeout, switches to two point, and reverts to their old scheme, handing the ball off and getting stuffed. It's only crazy when it doesn't work. If that had walked up the middle, I would have called my coach a genius. So I don't want to give him too much flack, but I don't know, I think we're the better team. I think you send that to overtime and you win an OT, but Iowa falls in a very close game. I will say it's a very close loss to a ranked opponent, a top 10 ranked opponent. I have a feeling we shouldn't drop too far because of that loss. Picked up a three-star center and a four-star center. I did not think he was gonna sign. You're lying. Why couldn't I do this? The 2025 Heisman Trophy winner is Miles Alston, Old Dominion Monarch. 1,500 yards, 21 touchdowns. My bad, Old Dominion. I guess I didn't know what I was doing. But guess what, baby? We dropped in the rankings for sure because we did lose to USC and we picked up an uncharacteristic loss to Rutgers. Regardless, we're seventh in the nation and we're in the playoffs against Kansas State. I'm gonna be honest, I don't think this is our year right now, but just look at this roster with me. Caleb Brown's looking amazing in the new offense. We've got some really solid juniors and our sophomore, Ben Cuter, middle linebacker, 83 overall. Kamari Moulton is a sophomore. Leighton Jones is a sophomore. Deshaun Lee, a junior. Freshman, DeMarvin Swain, 81 overall right end. Another junior right end. A junior free safety. And of course, Fabian Merling is a true freshman. Sitting at an 80 overall right now. We're already this good. I think Fabian's junior or senior year, we really could win the Natty. I mean, technically we can win it right now, but I'm a bit skeptical is all I'll say.
We're nine and three. Losing to USC, yeah, I get it. How did the six and six Rutgers team hang 54 on us? I just don't think we can win the Natty right now. And we lose to the Kansas State Wildcats. I'm not super shocked by that. I will say though, we've been getting a lot of coach points. So I'll start moving into tactician just to give us like game day boosts. I think this will be big when we make deep playoff pushes. I almost feel bad with how well this rebuild is going. I grind it on Old Dominion. Who would have known it's so much easier when you're not a one-star program? It's beyond me, really. All right, end of the season, we're nine and four. Fabian Merling. So he he did play better than McNamara, but still wasn't an insane season. Again, he's a freshman, but 24 and eight, your first season, it's awesome. Kamari Moulton did see a big step up and look at how much Merling was scrambling. I mean, five touchdowns, 514 yards. That's really solid. Glenn Brazil, I, I honestly expected more out of him, but 660 yards and eight touchdowns is nice. Seth Anderson, this is so weird. I moved Seth to wide receiver three. He ended up being our best guy. Now this is unique to playbook sometimes, like TCU's air raid may just simply use their wide receiver three on really good routes that are getting open consistently. So it's possible that I move Caleb Brown or Glenn Brazil to wide receiver three and just kind of see how they perform in that slot. Keeping in mind though, Glenn Brazil still did get the most receptions. Defensively, Aaron Graves. I'm going to miss him, man. 11 sacks out of him. He's an 89 overall, but he's out of here. Brian Allen, luckily, is a junior with six. And the other two guys are seniors. Four interceptions out of the sophomore middle linebacker. TJ Hall had four as well. It's another really Really good season for Iowa. We just aren't ready for the national championship. Headed into year three, our prospects board is set. I think I spent so much of the first two years looking at offense that I almost neglected defense. So I'm looking to get some really solid corners back on this lineup. I'm looking at Kona Chick, Skylar Hack, Brady Yates. And they're all white corners, very Iowa-esque. And I'm, I'm kidding. I didn't actually do that. It just happened that way. Robbie Tomzak, Dylan Cherry, just some studs on defense, a potential improviser quarterback. I, I'm putting a lot of my eggs in the back. Basket, that is Fabian Merling, but we have to be ready in case it doesn't work out. I'd love to get a solid guy and redshirt him. Tyree Iverson is not a gem. Here's a very small tight end, Kadeem Ellington, giving me Brock Bowers vibes. 86 speed, 88 excel. Let's finish up the scouting on some of these corners. Konachik looks solid. Skylar Hack equally just looks solid. Ooh, and there's our gem. Brady Yates. If you guys could help me actually, what exactly does it mean when they're a gem? I know it means they're a good prospect, but is there some significant differentiating factor to this? I know I want these guys. I know that's an exciting thing to see, but is there some literal difference? I know I'm kind of supposed to be the guy who knows that, but MM casual strikes again. The schedule, look at this. Headed to the season, Ohio State is not ranked. Although it's always a big game against Ohio State, right? On the schedule, we have ranked Washington, Illinois, and Michigan. So. Another tough schedule, but all of this is subject to change. Year three roster is, whoa, what? How are you progressing like this? Glenn Brazil, that's why. Maybe this is what makes someone a gem. His dev trait is elite. Glenn Brazil's a sophomore, he's a 92 overall. Keep in mind, at the end of last season, he was an 80. So all that off-season training took him up 12. It's also, I think it's specific to a player like this. When your quickness is maxed out, you don't have to spend so many skill points on quickness. But when your IQ is really low, that's dirt cheap to upgrade. So I think he just had no points in the dirt cheap stats. And it was so easy for his overall to go up. Glenn Brazil's the sophomore with one of the best wide receivers in college football. Yeah, he's our wide receiver one. I mean, we lost Caleb Brown, but whatever, man. So offensively, I mean, the air raid is, is moving along quickly. Kamari Moulton's looking a lot better. Wide receivers are so much better than what we started with. We have a regression at tight end a little bit. We got Gavin Hoffman. Um, and then of course, Fabian Merling. So Fabian Merling, like he did not get that insane offseason boost. His dev treat is impact, so he doesn't develop as fast. And the ratings he needs to upgrade are expensive. Quickness, health, his power is maxed though. I'm trying to win the Natty in the next three years. That would be awesome. Just simmed the first poll of season three. We've got a four-star left guard commit, a four-star strong safety commit. Oh, oh my God. Hello? Oh no, big setback inbound. We're three and five. We've dropped four Big Ten games and we're no longer a four and a half star program. We're a four-star program. Yikes. And right now we're about to take on Michigan in the big house. No. Dude, we lost at Northern Illinois. Beat Iowa State. Good. We got the Hawk Trophy. Beat Stanford, who was ranked. Beat Wisconsin, lost to Ohio State, who's now fifth in the nation. Lost to Washington, lost to Illinois, lost to Purdue. We're on a three-game losing streak. And now it's time for Michigan. Yikes. We're going to have to step in and watch this game. Year three, we're losing some steam. The big house is loud, and Michigan and Iowa both looking for a crucial win. Underperforming what's expected of us. Michigan's four and four. 
We're three and five. It's not stopping the stadium from being packed in a huge Big Ten matchup. Everybody talks about the window, the playoff window. And I like to think that for Iowa right now, it's this year, next year, and the year after that was our window. But this year might be a wash. We're gonna have to step it up big time. I will play the key moments of this game. This is my first time touching the field with this squad. There's two superstars on this offense to look at. On your far left is Glenn Brazil, the 100 speed receiver. And in the backfield, Fabian Merling, along with Kamari Moulton. We're gonna start this game off with a play action and I can't see any buttons, cause the big house. Second and 10, let's make this manageable and run the football. Oh, maybe a little more than manageable. Maybe we take this all the way. We'll go with coach's suggested plays. I don't want to cheese with just my favorites. Another play action, but look at the crosser and a roughing the passer. Antoine Mays Bynum. No, it's a holding. Oh, I thought that was roughing the passer. I got rocked. Jerome Williams. Oh, it's an illegal man downfield. Discipline, gentlemen. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'm headed back to the run on first and 15, but it is broke. Everybody's cold. Everybody's scared of this Michigan defense. We're gonna hit our tight end, our safety net. It's third and 11. Don't forget, Fabian Merling is a scrambler. This is so scary. Step up in that pocket. Fabian, Fabian Merling, a great downfield block. Don't fumble, buddy. Giant pickup. I haven't used Glenn Brazil yet, but I'm not giving up on the run game either. Amari Moulton says maybe I should. Switch into an all go. That's bagged. It's bagged, there's pressure on me. Yeah, 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 I know. Iowan punting, I know. Is that a punt? That's actually low-key a punt dot if we can get to it. Oh! Ho, ho, ho. Defense comes up big. It's third and three. They're subbing me in to try and make something out of this. I want to run this ball. Hey, give me two blocks. Oh, shit. It's still a pass. It didn't accept my audible. Oh, ho, 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 the big house. I hate playing here. Third and six. I'll come in on defense. Hey, got Ben Cuter in the middle. I like this dude a lot. Doesn't look like Michigan has any. I lied. I lied to your face. Maybe a run out of Michigan here. It is. It's a counter. We're all over it with Ben Cuter. Nice play. I got to remember that in these big games against big opponents, you just don't have a pocket. It's really difficult for your offensive line to block. Holy shit. Two broken tackles from Michigan star running back. First and 10, we got a two minute drill here. Look, if I don't have any time in this pocket, why not go for the slip screen? Collapses fast. It's not even throwable. Okay, I've got a second to see my hot routes. That's good. Oh, big blitz. We got to go halfback. Yes, the safety's on him, man. Coverage, Kamari Moulton! Huge play, Kamari. For the first time all day, we've quieted this crowd just a little bit. There's a soft spot in the zone. Not as soft as I thought. Gonna go with the handoff here, get great blocks from the O-line. Going back to Iowa's roots. We're supposed to be an air raid program now, and all I can do is run the ball. I haven't hit Glenn Brazil yet, but I don't need to. Not if, not, not if I'm forcing it, that's a monster catch. It feels bad not using Glenn Brazil, but he just hasn't been open. I'm gonna take Kamari Moulton, he can bend the corner, big spin. Gave it a go, first and 10. This is an excellent drive right now. Let's keep the tempo up here, boys. Maybe we use Glenn Brazil here. Can he get to the middle of the field? Okay, we'll take the check. Oh, that's a s Oh my God, I thought that was a hitch! Oh! If Iowa drops this game, it's solely on me. Looks like they put up a touchdown without my input, which makes me happy, because my input hasn't been great so far. It's seven to seven entering the fourth quarter. We need this game. We really got to hold them to three here. It's second and three. This is probably a run. I'm on Entringer. I'm trying to blow this up. He's hot right now. There's a motion out to the right, and it is a run. Iowa collapses. I don't know if you guys watched my Road to Glory, but there's a man who really carried that. His name was Emmanuel Cantu. And when I look at Glenn Brazil, I see flashes. Now, if this offensive line can hold, I'm gonna give him a shot to do something for this program. Glenn Brazil caught Most Iowa! The big house is stunned. Glenn Brazil just mossed him. 99 speed, 99 spectacular catch. And you just saw both of them right there. Oh, safety blitz. That was so risky. I came full speed ahead, left my zone, and made a monster play. Holy shit. Second and 16. What's Michigan got? Is that a run? Second and 16. It is. It's a counter run. I am so shocked by that play call. I'm going to guess pass. I'm going to bring Orr over to the right side. Could go halfback. Throws it away. Fourth and 15. Michigan's got a punt. Second and 10. Iowa ball. Opportunity to win this ball game. Second toughest stadium in the whole nation right now. Play action. Merling's flushed out. That's third and 10. Fabian Merling. Oh my God. Blitz up the middle. We've got an injury too. Caleb Fajoko is injured. We're punting it right back. Just like that, man. I went to go sim. Not only does Michigan put up a touchdown, but they got a pick 
six. I was trying to put up a, a poverty touchdown here. The stadium doesn't even care. I wouldn't either. Just give Glenn Brazil some passing yards. Why not? Heaves it. Another interception. Five headed into the big house and headed out with another loss. Iowa's worst season coming in year three. We're three and six. Darius Taylor. That's the running back. 203 yards, three touchdowns. Malachi Nelson, Boise State's quarterback, is the 2026 Heisman winner. Now, luckily for us in uh, season three, we did end with two more wins and another loss. So five and seven. I say luckily, but that's not that great. Really tough year for us. I hope this isn't detrimental to our program, but we just got to look forward to next season. All right, head into year four off of a really bad year. No way. Because we were so bad, we couldn't retain Fabian. Oh, I wasn't even paying attention to that. Oh no, where did he go? I mean, there's nothing I could have done to one more game other than step in and play all of them, which does defeat the purpose. <laughs> oh, this is the most depressing thing I've ever seen in my whole life. Our two studs basically said I was not good enough for us anymore. We used to be a four and a half star after the first season. We're now three and a half. I haven't rebuilt this program. I've reverted this program. Glenn Brazil is a wildcat. Oh my God, this is so depressing. And guess what? He's from Kansas and now he's in Kansas. Yeah, good for you, buddy. What about loyalty? Fabi went to Nebraska. Why would you go to Nebraska? What did Nebraska offer that we didn't? Now, there's a lot of things I could have done to retain these guys if I paid more attention. I just didn't realize just how badly that season was going to hurt us. It's back to the drawing board, boys. Let's reset for Iowa. Oh, we're back. We're back to the old Dominion days. <laughs> the good news is we still have a good quarterback option. Marco Lanes is now a senior. He's an 81 overall and he's a field general, so he's got the accuracies that we need, but he's, he's not Fabian. Wide receiver's now our best one, Mays Bynum. We still have improved the wide receiver room, we've improved the halfback room, we've improved the quarterback room, but that's a really bad season. That's, that's tough to see. It's a rebuild season. I'm trying to go quick here. Oregon's QB wins Heisman. I have to pay so much more attention. Hey, got a weird looking bowl. Relia Quest Bowl in Tampa Bay. We're 10th in the nation. I just like don't have a grip on Iowa. Iowa just does what they want. We're 10th in the nation. We're at 9 and 3, 7 and 2 in the Big Ten. We beat ranked Nebraska. We got, dude, we're literally 0 and 3 against Oregon. We went, we, they dropped 63 on us. We beat Wisconsin, beat Maryland, beat Indiana, beat Michigan at home, beat Minnesota. We lost to Louisiana Tech. Okay, guys, what are we doing? Beat UCLA, lost to USC, beat Iowa State, and beat Ball State. Not bad. This season was really big on recruiting for me because we just, we're so stupid and lost literally the cornerstones of our program in the transfer portal. So picked up a lot of the guys that I was looking at. Four-star free safety, Evan Klutz. And I mean, it's a clean wash for Iowa, but I was going for lower star guys. We're not even a four-star program anymore. So a lot of these three stars was like, let's just get these guys on the squad and rebuild the foundation. There's nothing standout to show you. I'm kind of hoping that we can just get back to a four-star program and then make our push. Technically, we could get a playoff game though this year for 10th in the nation. Kind of de depends how this bowl game goes. Get a two-star D tackle commit. That's a, such a big setback though. Losing that star. Oh, and we lost to Oklahoma too. Shoot. All right, here's the roster headed into the preseason of 2028, I believe. Best players are on the offensive line. Kyrie Gage, junior running back. He's an 85 overall. I like to see that. I think we may need to start Travis Prude. He's a really good scrambling quarterback. And luckily his accuracies are not that bad. Also, he's a sophomore. He's virtually as good as Mike Werner. I'm gonna move him up in the depth chart and get him uh, get him progressing. After that nine and three season, we're back to a four-star program. That's gonna make recruiting so much easier. And hopefully an easy schedule coming up. Arizona State, Iowa State, Western. You can't ask for a better start to this schedule. We have three ranked opponents being USC, Michigan State, Nebraska. We dodge Michigan and Ohio State this year. This is really, really, really good. It's so beautiful to see our recruiting board is reset with actual four stars, and we are absolutely targeting quarterbacks. Sony Sun, Darren Romanowski, and Daryl Fink are my top three. I do want to scout these guys fully. Sun just looks like an average overall good scrambling quarterback, nothing spectacular. Romanowski, not a gem, but he still looks good. And Fink is the field general. I'm really hoping this guy is solid because I prefer to go field general. Accuracies look good. Throw power looks good. Last up is Walter Moffitt, scrambler. It's We got to get one of these dudes. Also, I love Max Plummer on this team. We need somebody who can lay pipe. 
Hey, Javier Horn, three-star running back. 92 speed, 91 Excel, he's a gem. In 2028, we'll sim to the first pole here. It's weird to say this is the start of the rebuild because we're so many seasons in, but after losing those two cornerstone guys, I guess you can say we're back to the drawing board. Iowa's back! We haven't lost a game. We're about to take on Minnesota. We're eight and O. Oh. Certainly helps when the schedule's easier. So we lose Romanowski and Moffitt both to Michigan, but Lichtensteiger commits to Iowa, and this been a linebacker, our Iowa. What about the rest of our quarterbacks? How do they look now? Losing those two to Michigan hurts so bad. I'll step us into our next big game and just see what this offense is doing so well. Still 9-0, now we take on Illinois. Going to the playoffs here is would be the last thing I expected out of this team. 10-0, taking on Michigan State. Got another commit. Johnny Schuler, Dearborn, Michigan. Deshaun Lavrone. we're still looking at punters. We are Iowa. Trayvon Westbrook's halfback, Bloomington, Indiana. He lost to Michigan State. Now, this is like the biggest game of the week. This is a huge game. Number two in the nation, Nebraska, taking on number three, Iowa. On the season so far, Travis Prude, the scrambler, is upgrading fast and playing super well. Next year, he's a junior. He's got Magician, Mobile Resistance, Option King, and Headstrong. And he's throwing 34 and seven, 308 yards per game. A surprisingly good season out of him. Kyrie Gage is looking really, really good too. And through the air, it's Seth Whites, Darius Buck, and Nate Steinkuhler. Might have picked up in our first year in red shirt. 14 touchdowns out of Seth Whites. And defensively, we do have an injury for Jeff Fields, but Robbie Tomzak still looks really good. That's our freshman corner who he just picked up. Two interceptions in his freshman year. All right, let's step into this big home game against Nebraska. I'm not sure that I've stepped into a home game yet. Oh, look at the stadium. It's striped out. That looks so sick. Nebraska Nebraska scores first and second. Iowa, we got to get in the end zone or this is going to get out of hand fast. 17 to 10, 17 to 17. Nebraska puts up another one. It's going to be a high scoring game. 24 to 24, 31 to 24. At least it's Iowa ball. Travis Prude, a quarterback that wasn't supposed to get a lot of attention. is playing really, really well right now. There's a handoff. We'll take three yards. This is one of the biggest games we've played. I can't believe Nebraska is second in the nation at eight and three. Now that being said, we might have more wins, but we're losing right now to the Cornhuskers laser to I believe Seth White's. Travis Prude at home, 300 completed passes this season. It's only a sophomore. That might be the future of this program. It was a great, great ball too. 24-31, Travis Prude in the backfield. First and goal, looking to tie this ball game up. Laser into top. <laughs> It's a tight coverage, but it's caught. Dude, he got rocked on that catch too. That's a huge catch. Iowa is gonna tie this game up with three minutes left. That's Darius Buck, once again, a sophomore. Sophomore to sophomore connection. Is Iowa back? 31 to 31, Nebraska starts with a handoff. Got a pass here, that looks like it's going deep. Blown coverage, Iowa. Nebraska is right back on the board. I gotta say that bumblebee stripe in the stadium does look awesome, but it doesn't look great when you give up a touchdown in 15 seconds, boys. Trust the process, that's what they say, right? Prude hits the whip route, looking like prime MMG. He's going down the sideline. Travis Prude, 354 and three, but he also has three interceptions. Let's see it, Prude. Step up, you are a scrambler. Breaks a tackle. He's got daylight. Saves his body. 16 rushes, too. Holy shit. This TCU air raid, your quarterback gets moving. Travis Prude, once again. I love how willing he is to take off. We're about to score again. We're about to score too fast. This is a slug. Hey, I said I want to make Iowa an offensive juggernaut. You can say we're doing it. Travis Prude, check down. Broken tackles. Down to the one yard line. You gotta see a run here, right? No, it's a pass. Prude rolls out. I guess it is a run. Travis Prude using his legs. Little Heisman in front of this big packed crowd. Tie the ball game up, 38 to 38. Nebraska looking to score quick. Second and one, please. Boys, that's a big drop. But we've got an injured JP Wake. As long as my quarterback stays healthy, I'll be just fine. Third and one, Nebraska, close ball game here. They've still got three timeouts. He's flushed out to the right. He breaks it. That's such a huge broken tackle. You come down with them there, that clock is ticking and it's a big fourth down. I don't want to say it's the biggest play of the game yet, but it's the biggest play of the game so far. What a huge broken tackle for Nebraska's quarterback. It's third and 11. Come on, boys. Close it up. Huge throw. Caught. Got to get downfield, got to get downfield fast. We have 18 seconds left in a timeout. We're on about the 30. You got to go deep, Prude. You got, oh, infinite pocket. 
Oh my goodness, Travis Prue just, hey, he's only a sophomore. I want to cut him some slack, but that was the biggest misthrow of your life, buddy. Hang out in that, where are you? Where on earth? Even if he caught it, that's not the right throw. Travis brood has got a lot to learn and we lose this game. Dude, Nebraska can score like that. I mean, they got two touchdowns up in 17 seconds. The Heroes game and a battle of two of the best teams in the nation. Hands over to Nebraska, but I gotta say, I mean, the fact that right now we're hanging with Nebraska, that we're third in the nation, not, now about to drop, but it's a good sign of things to come. But those are just some big mistakes, some blown coverages, some missed passes. And that last throw is just, that's a coach's nightmare. Throwing a check down with eight seconds left. Good game, Nebraska. It's a loss, the second loss for Iowa this year. We're technically still going to the college football playoffs though, right? Ooh, four-star guard commits, three-star guard commits. That's a good sign. Oh, <laughs> the Big Ten Championship is Iowa. Iowa, Michigan. I'm not going to step in on this game because, I mean, maybe I'm delusional, but I just don't think we're ready. Darius Buck does get Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week. Something tells me we lost that game. We did. Yeah, I, 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 I kind of figured. I think our ranking is very inflated right now. Let's see how bad it was. It was not bad at all. We lost by two to Michigan. I mean, we'll get a playoff berth here. Oh my goodness. Seth O'Sullivan of Tulane wins the Heisman. I love the variety. I will say that. You rarely see the same teams and similar players year over year. It's, it's very dynamic. All right, we got to step in for this game. I, the, the sim gives and the sim takes. We had some of the best players in the nation and we were dropping games like flies so bad that they transferred. And in this season, 2028, we're 10 and three, taking down the 10 and three volunteers in the playoffs. I think it speaks to how well Travis Prude is playing. Dude, the three best players on this team are sophomores. Okay. I am talking shit, but I'm not giving myself enough credit for the talent that we acquired earlier. Look at this. I mean, we used to be so senior top heavy. Stu Lutz is the first senior on this list. Everybody's coming back next year. If we retain 80% of these guys, we're gonna be so good in the next two years. Cedric Jackson, Ed Sauer, Cameron Jeffrey, Kyrie Gage, Quan Watt, a lot of these guys on the offensive line. But then, hey, Travis Prude, only a sophomore, now an 81 overall. Darius Buck, only a sophomore, 84 overall. A 95 speed, 6 one wide receiver, Darius Buck. 84 overall, Iowa, take it on the Volunteers. It's our second appearance in the college football playoffs. We've never gotten past this first round though. Jesus. That stadium looks so insane with those colors. I honestly think that Tennessee is some of the sickest, like color combos, stadium uniforms. It's just such a cool school. If I wasn't gonna go to Michigan State, I was going to Tennessee, fun fact. I think I made the right call though. This would be such a weird year to actually move on, but let's see how this looks. We strike first. It's three to zero at the end of the first quarter. Three to seven. Oh, Iowa, you gotta find the end zone, buddy. Yikes. Okay, 10 to 21, 10 to 24, 18 to 24. Wait a minute, this isn't possible, right? Wait, it's probably not possible, but we're putting up a really good fight. 18, 24, Tennessee's got the ball and they can kind of milk this clock. And Jesus, that's still just the worst play to come in on. Just a sweep touchdown. There goes the doggo. Tennessee going for two here. I think our downfall started when we went for two and didn't get it. Called the time I went for two. It's good defense though, right there. Very good defense. College football playoff ends. There was a obscene amount of scoring in that last two minutes, but it, it wasn't enough. 38 to 31. I do think if we make the, Jesus, the player of the game was still Travis Prude. 531 passing yards. Oh my God. We lost and we still got it. tough loss here to Tennessee. But if we can run it back and next year get back to the playoffs, I think we're going to be in a really, really good spot. What looked like a horrible setback, maybe look at this team a little bit more, realize just how much young talent we have and we actually look really good. All right, it's preseason of 2029. Coming off a college playoff loss, but a, a, I mean, a good loss against a really good team. Look at this team, man. Offensive line is monstrous. Kyrie Gage hitting his prime as a senior, 92 overall. And then two sophomores, Pat Maje, Glenn Kadu, both looking really, really good. Wide receivers aren't as good as I'd like them to be, but they're a lot better than where we started. Two of these guys are seniors, so if we don't make a big push this year, eh, definitely gotta go for some wide receiver prospects, but we lost a half a star again. We're three and a half stars. It's such a good season. That means transfer portal. That means prospects will be even a bit tougher this season than they were last season, but we just gotta focus on wide receivers. We've got a few really good wide receivers on the board right now. Here's Ethan Orndoff, just an overall solid guy, and he is interested in Iowa. Same with JJ Doucette. Philip Perkins is that athlete build. 92 speed, 93 excel. Not a gem. Alfonso Ezek. There's my gem. I'm starting to see that I think gem has something to do with abilities. Abilities and mentals. 97 speed, 95 excel, deep threat. Now we're talking. Another gem, Bobby Boone. 
Really good right tackle. I'll keep an eye on him as well. And our schedule for this year, I feel like this is just going to be such a massive year. First three games are not tough. Then we go into the gauntlet. Penn State, Oregon, Michigan State, USC, but no Ohio State, no Michigan. Not seeing Ohio State and Michigan is a really good thing. Those stadiums are just so tough to play in. And we end the season with Nebraska again. Wow, they know what they're doing. That four-star stud D tackle, Henry Eagles is back. I do want like a superstar D tackle on this lineup at all times. Really good in a 4-3, so I'm happy we have him. All right, well, we're still ranked at five and three, but we're two and three in the Big Ten, so I don't know about the Big Ten championship. We've got USC on the clock here. And then again, ranked Nebraska is our last game, so if we can get past Nebraska, I wouldn't be shocked if, ooh, four-star corner, George. Ian Nacho. Welcome to a soon Natty Chip, Iowa. That's what I like to think. We beat USC. We move up to 22nd in the nation. I think with our ranking here, if we beat Nebraska, assuming we win these kind of gimme games against worse programs, we beat Nebraska. We got a shot to go. Ooh, yep. Yeah, we increase. It must have been a win. We're 18th in the nation taking on Rutgers. This is the last game before Nebraska. We win this game and we beat, we got to beat Nebraska. Okay, we're 16th in the nation. That means we won. So they're first in the nation. Let's go look at this team. Set Cedric Jackson, this is officially the highest overall player I've ever had my hands on in a dynasty. He's got insane abilities. Pocket shield, play action shield, wear down. Kyrie Gage is boosted to a 95. Nebraska. How are they number one in the nation? Sophomore middle linebacker is a 96. Insane defense, that's how. Insane defense, they got Curtis Weatherspoon who's boosted to an 89. I mean, they look good. They're four and a half star program now with an 89 overall, but nothing's really jumping out to me. Some really fast wide receivers, 97, 95, 97. All right, yeah, they're definitely good. We don't have the luck of home field advantage on this one either. We're running this back. The game we lost last year. Deja vu, gentlemen. Deja vu. The Heroes game taking on Nebraska. We were third in the nation at this point last year. Now we're 16th. And Nebraska, best team in the nation. Not only that, but it's a rain game. Luckily, I don't know if you noticed, but Cedric Jackson, our 98 overall right guard, has platinum tier weather resistance. I don't know if that'll be a big factor here, but I hope it is. We either stopped Nebraska already or we're just starting with ball. Now we must have stopped him already. See how we look here. To step up with Prude and just try to not take a loss here. I did have that middle open, but second and 10. Nice little scramble. Wait, we've got a ton of room with Travis Prude. All right, Gage is in his prime and I have two star offensive linemen, AKA run the ball. Gonna keep this one. Travis Prude on the read option. You gotta get down or out of bounds. I have no idea what play this is. I can't see, I'm snapping it. Okay. It's a beautiful play call. Oh, block him! Darius Beck. He's a true wide receiver. He doesn't block downfield. Uh-oh. Screamer. I can't even get the ball off. That was such a hot blitz. We lose 12 yards on that. Second and 22. I'm gonna try and make this a manageable third down with a little run play here, and I'm gonna probably lose yards. Third and 25. Nebraska, stop, man. Third and 25. Oh, they're gonna leave! Did he catch that? He did. Hey, that puts us in field goal range. Beautiful. How hard is this kick gonna be in the rain? It's pretty hard, but should be manageable. Pins it. Three to zero, good start. Honestly, good start. And just like that, it's 10 to zero. Nebraska's yet to score, and this is our next big moment. Third and eight, four man rush. Cedric Jackson's got him hold up. Oh, easily could have been a fumble. It's fourth and three. I kind of like the go for it here because we've already got a field goal lead. Only problem is I have no idea who's running what and what their buttons are. Fourth and three. Huge play right in the middle. What are they doing? Fourth and short and they leave it. All right. First and goal. I want to pass here. That box is way too loaded. Step up. Travis Prude. Find a man. No. Oh, what a play. That was a risky throw anyway. Luckily, Nebraska doesn't score off it. They are scoreless in the first half right now. We're back to Iowa defense. The crowd is quiet too. They're nervous about how Nebraska's playing and they leave a seam to my five foot five wide receiver. <laughs> we got audibles now, boys. This stadium is stunned. Travis Prude, Travis Prude. That was a huge scramble. Gonna take as much as we can here and get out of bounds. Three man rush. I love to see that. Oh, but there is a delayed blitzer and he gets off and he's fast. I'm gonna try this though. Ooh, got the ball away. Second and 10. I actually wanna run here, coach. Yeah, we're taking the inside zone here. We're gonna trust Cedric Jackson. And, oh my God, that's a slip screen. Mm, sometimes, dude, you input the audible, but they just, it just, then nobody hears it. Nobody hears it and you're running the same play. Oh, Kyrie Gage, you gotta turn that corner, buddy. Kyrie Gage!
Huge play. 17 to 10 lead for Iowa. Nebraska still can't get in the end zone. We got the ball again. We're taking it to number one Nebraska right now. That's for sure. Oh, and the tight end's gonna clear in front of this. I gotta get the blue meter on my passes though. I always forget that. Sometimes when I get nervous, I revert to what I know about Madden and it's, it just doesn't work. Is it delayed blitz there? This should be a nice catch and it is. Darius Buck's probably the only guy I trust to really make that catch right there. Travis Prude's gonna step up. Travis Prude, out of bounds. Two timeouts. I love this. Coach is giving me all air raid options. Coach is not saying let's concede into halftime. Coach wants to score again. I love that shit, Coach. And you're just going to leave my tight end? This is Iowa. Coach wants verticals again. I, I love it, Coach. You call plays like this all day. We'll be natty champions in no time. Ooh, that was almost there. Oh, they got QB spies on me. They know what I'm about. We'd have to convert this and then spike fast. But what if Hanson's in a seam over there? That's kind of what I'm hoping. No. No. Right over the top. Oh, you just gotta get down. Get down, get down, get down. Spike. Can we spike this fast enough? Why can't I spike? It's not even giving me the option. I have no timeouts. Snap the ball! That's frustrating. It would not let me spike. Hey, it's 17-0 to zero at half. I got nothing to complain about. We are shutting out Nebraska at home. Holy shit. It's a... It's... They're getting smacked. Nebraska's got the ball. Oh, this is beautiful. This is so beautiful to watch. Wobbler. Caught. Spin. Please tackle him. Please. We know their wide receivers are fast, boys. Nebraska holding on to the last time out. It's be quite the miracle out of Nebraska. They pull this off. I don't know. What, what is number 10 doing? I don't think that's legal. Wait, I think it's bugged. I think Nebraska can't snap the ball right now because number 10's not on the line. Oh, the CTE's hitting early. The sim gives and the sim takes. Nebraska gets a delay a game. But yeah, I'd be stunned too, dude. All right, first and 15. Nebraska will drop back from Witherspoon. Dude, we are like, we're really giving it up right now. I guess it's kind of the end of the game. We're playing soft. Nebraska's looking to punch this in, get a two point and potentially another onside. Quick throw, quick touchdown. We stop this two point, the game is truly over. Let's be nervous for good reasons. He's out of bounds. 10 point lead with 14 seconds as ball game. Let's recover this though anyway, right? Beautiful. That's why you're on the hands team, buddy. Victory formation versus Nebraska. That feels good. Travis Prude kneels it out. Let's go, baby. Let's go. 24 to 14. Walked into Nebraska's house in the rain. Taking the win here and, and most likely securing a spot in the college football playoffs. 16th in the nation coming into this game. Beating the best team in the nation. Travis Prude gets played the game on a not-so-spectacular stat line. Steve Goldman. TCU. This is, by the way, why I use TCU Air Raid. I feel like I see TCU wide receivers win Heisman more than any other program. So that's why I went TCU's Air Raid. Holy shit, wait, I clowned this bowl game earlier. So in 2004, Iowa goes to the Cheez-It Bowl. And now, in 2029, we're back. That doesn't mean I'm not in the national championship playoffs, right? Oh my God, it does. We didn't make it. Oh, that's such a bummer. Okay, but we're close. We're dangerously close. And our quarterback's about to be a senior. Let's see if we win the Cheez-It Bowl. The Cheez-It Bowl champions! It's the Citrus Bowl. Well, whatever, dude. There's a fucking cheese it right there. We won the Citrus Bowl. We beat Bama. 2030 will be a huge season for Iowa. All right, the preseason of 2030. We're still ranked. Cedric Jackson, now a senior. 98 overall. Shaquille Dallas, 94. Offensive line looks just stunning. Tom Zach's an 89. Majay's an 87. Tillman an 88. And then it's a big year for our quarterback. Prude, now a senior. 87 overall entering the season with really good accuracies for a scrambler. Now, sadly, we do lose Gage. So our hatback room is, is a lot uglier. It's Enrique Battles, our starter. But we still have Darius Buck for another season, along with Anthony Rooks and Bradley Witted. And I was right, Rooks is actually 5'6". Yeah, he looks very small. Javante Lennon's an 85 entering the season. Sim to the first poll, and look at the game we got coming up. We're 7-0, 4 in the Big Ten, second in the nation. We're going to playoffs. We gotta win these big games, though. Taking on Ohio State in the shoe, they're ninth in the nation. I apologize, I haven't been looking at stats every season. There's a lot more to look at than Madden, but Travis Travis Prude in his senior season is playing out of his mind. 2,000 yards, 22 and two. Such a good season. Enrique Battle's not looking bad. Six touchdowns. He's really slow. I just gotta say, he's got 86 speed, but he's still having a good season. Bradley Witted, five touchdowns, seven for Rooks, and three for Darius Buck. I'd like to see Buck getting more touches, but everyone's playing well right now, so I, I really don't have much to say. Ten and a half sacks, 
through half of the season is disgusting. Gage Wood, D-tackle, looking awesome. Let's pop into this game against Ohio State. We're an 88 overall now. You know what's so funny is after that first season, we were like an 88 overall, four and a half star program. I thought this was gonna be a cakewalk. And then some big setbacks. I'd say right now we're finally back to where I wanted to be that season. But we've never had a better opportunity for the college football playoffs than we have right now. And it's gonna start with a big win against a really big program, Ohio State. 14 to zero in the first quarter. 21 to zero, 28. Oh my God, we're fucking blowing them out. Not only are we shutting them out virtually, but we're blowing them out. There's no need to step in. We just smack the Buckeyes. Oh my goodness, I can't believe that was a blowout. I assume we're first in the nation after that, but let's find out. Yeah, we're first in the nation. We're taking out a ranked Minnesota. I'm gonna slow sim this because if we start to drop games, I need to be cognizant. I gotta pay a little more attention. Signed a four-star quarterback too, Darius Grubbs, beauty. Yep, we breeze past Minnesota. 9-0, and taking on Michigan State. Don't tell me we lost to Michigan State again. Last time we were undefeated, we lost to Michigan State. Nope, beat Michigan State. We're 10-0, and but we actually are now second in the nation. What about a full undefeated season? That'd be a hell of a run. 11-0, taking on Nebraska. For the first time, I think I can confidently say I'm gonna sim my Nebraska game. Got another commit here. Did we go 12-0? 12-0 would be absolutely bonkers. 12-0. Gage Wood with five TFLs, Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week, 12 and 0. Wait a minute, now we got the Big Ten Championship against Penn State. If we win, we could go full undefeated. We win the Big Ten Championship and then we go through the playoffs with a bye. I wanna see if we had any close calls. Dude, this is the best season we have ever had at Iowa. Maryland was a four point game. Michigan State blew them out. Minnesota blew them out. Ohio State, we blew them out. We watched it. UCLA blowout. Dude, no way. Northwestern by 10, Washington by eight, Wisconsin by a million, FCS Northwest by a million. Iowa State was a close game and Utah was a very close game. Oh my God, here we go, boys. I was honestly gonna do a separate rebuild challenge where I try to go fully undefeated and I, I think we might accidentally do it. Pretty good accident to have. We gotta beat Penn State though. I haven't played anything against Penn State. It's the Big Ten Championship. It says we're home. I don't actually know how it works for this. Are we actually at home? I'm gonna rock the alternates because they're crispy as hell. The Big Ten Championship. It's a dream to have that trophy again. Come on, boys. Travis Prude, senior season. Darius Buck, senior season. 99 offensive lineman Cedric Jackson. It's very Iowa-esque. Here comes Penn State in the all whites. And it is. It's a neutral site. I probably should know that, but we're half Iowa, half Penn State, which is good. It means we're not going to see some serious, scary stadium pulse. All right, Iowa. I'm going to play the key moments. Penn State's on the board first, and they have the ball again. Stop it. Stop it. I want the bye, dude. The bye would be so nice. Multiple star middle linebackers, star edge rushers. There's a run out of Penn State. I'm gonna send a blitz here. I'm gonna send you off the edge. Ooh, I gotta get on the free safety. In case it's an edge run. Penn State, do you like to run the ball? You sure do, but it's bottled up. Great time to send the strong safety. Let's hold no field goal and let's regroup. Dude, Majay, such a stud. They go draw, lose a yard. It's definitely a field goal coming up. Can we block a field goal? George Iannaccio, the four-star corner that we just signed is in on special teams. Does not block the kick. Inside zone to battle, he's only got 86 speed, but that's enough for a yard. Third and six, baby. Ooh, they vacate the slant. Dude, these jerseys are so sick. Penn State's got a real good D-line though. Ooh, <laughs> just barely. Travis Brood, like I said, man, he's fast. 10-7, back in the red zone. All right, very good responses here from Iowa. First and goal. I'm going battle on the inside zone. They've got the box packed. Oh, but a Wow, the center just made a heads up blocking play. You don't ever see that in Madden. Third and seven, Penn State couldn't score. We've got an opportunity to here. I like a Texas route. When I need seven yards, it's my go-to. Ooh, I barely get this off. Great throw, but Rooks can't break it. We will get a field goal out of this. Coach wants to go for this. I actually love this play called Jet Inside Zone. They've got the box loaded, but I want to try it anyway. Fourth and one, beautiful. Beautiful for battle. Second and six. Let's put up one more here, boys. Everybody's hot right now. We're looking really good. Travis Prude. Travis Prude doing Travis Prude things. Send down the running back to block. <laughs> Five bigger balls, I'd dive. All go right in the middle is battle. He's a receiving back, but it's broken up. We're back to our roots, boys. Third and goal, two yards to go. Hand off, insane push. The strongest point on this entire team is my offensive line. We have a 90 plus at virtually every single position on the offensive line. Penn State gets a field goal, it's 21 to 13. Second and two, 
Clock's ticking. Ooh, pocket starts to collapse, but Prude with his legs. I love you, Travis. Good blocking. Ooh, we vacated the middle, but can I throw that? Travis Prude, you psychopath! To Darius Buck, that was an insane throw. And I think this is zone. I think Witted might have a, might have a little seam here. Let's not stare it down. Okay, damn. Fumble! Thank you. Let's call a timeout here. I really just, I almost just want this field goal, no? It's second and 20, the field goal is a little too long. I think we just pick up a little bit of yards and, and make this a field goal for the Big Ten Championship. No, that's the worst thing that could happen right there. Clock's ticking. I gotta go for the end zone. Let's go. Third and 26. I gotta give him a shot. Wait, he kind of, kind of has him. Good defense and a horrible last drive. If I just hand that ball off three times, we kick the field goal. But I got greedy, I got sapped, no timeouts, and it's an eight point lead at halftime. We're dominating this game though, we are. Coach is bringing me in on third and nine. I think it's man coverage. I kind of want Orndorff to just cook this linebacker. Oh, it is. Oh, it's, it is. <laughs> Put the big boy linebacker on Orndorff. And he's in the end zone. Oh, that's huge. 28 to 16, opportunity to put this game in a really tough spot for Penn State. I don't ever want to say it's over, but such a good opportunity here. Beautiful throw. There's battle with a broken ankle. A lot of third and longs in this game though, I will say that. Third and 10, no blitz, everyone's dropping back. Prude can't escape this time, but I kept us in field goal range. They're gonna have me kick it. 50 yarder. This is not gonna be easy. Gotta point it down for a little extra power. That could be, oh no, I went red. I think if you hit red, cause that felt like it was pretty accurate, but I went red there, shanked the field goal. Penn State's going for it on fourth and seven. I think it's time for a blitz. I'm sending McDougal in Dallas. This is risky. Take me right up the middle, got him! Screamer! That was a huge play. Sorry if you got headphones on and I've been kind of quiet up until now, but that was one of the biggest plays of the Big Ten Championship. Jesus. Bagged in man coverage. Nobody's home. They want me to kick it again, and it's a 51-yarder. Well, at least I get another opportunity, right? Oh, that's way faster. That one yard made a huge difference. Oh, that could have been... Holy shit, I'm cracked. Holy shit, I'm ass! I thought that was perfect. Oh, my God. Field goals are not the strong suit. They're going for it on fourth and goal. I gotta blow this up with Dallas if it's a run. Fourth and goal. The inch yard line. Blow it up! Let's go! Iowa goal line stand! Can we just chew this clock out? No, we're back on defense. Fourth and 18 though. This is the most obvious blitz scenario of my life. Just send heat and pray. Oh, oh, and there's a flag. And there's a flag and it's a touchdown. And I didn't pick that. Hello. Holding offense for the 28. We love a bailout. Dude, I thought I was gonna pick that ball too. Hello. If I had picked it, I wouldn't even need this play. Throws a quick one. Great defense. Keep the drive alive, guys. Just chew the clock. They don't have any timeouts. It's third and six. Oh, I snapped that too fast. I didn't even realize that clock was moving. Please don't make me kick another field goal. Oh my God, I'm kicking another field goal. This one's 48 yards. And I'm just fucking wobbling out of my mind. Look at this. I have no idea. That one's gonna go in. That was the shittiest kick I... <laughs> Kicking is not easy. You need a good kicker. I have no idea how we continue to be in this scenario with so little time left, but fourth and 13. We know it's a pass. Just gotta give somebody an opportunity. Tom Zach, please tackle him. They have no timeouts. Oh my God, I'm blowing coverage. They scored. It's 23 to 31. At every opportunity, I've actually attempted to sabotage this game on accident. We just need to recover this. Get your ass on the ground. Ball game. Big 10 champions are Iowa. We have an undefeated season, gentlemen. An undefeated season. 31 to 23 over Penn State. That's a bye in the playoffs. Travis Pruitt, baby. You know the vibes. Big 10 champions, baby. Hey! So it's, it's not the Heisman, but it's like the backup Heisman. Johnny United's Golden Arm Award goes to Travis Prude. That's awesome. Winning any award is sick. Gage Wood, best defensive player. He's a sophomore. Dude had 18 sacks. That's gotta be an Iowa record, right? And the best quarterback award. Wait a minute, that means I got Heisman. Did I get best QB? Johnny Unitas, best interior lineman. Goes to our 99 overall. Cedric Jackson, Gage Wood, Lombardi Award winner. I don't even know what award that is. So we didn't get Heisman? We got all those awards and not Heisman? The Heisman goes to, oh, it just hasn't been selected yet.
Our first playoff game is against the Washington Huskies. I think that's a really good team to get. I don't think they're gonna be too scary. If that was like an Oregon, a Michigan, and Ohio State, I I'd be a little concerned. All right, let's look at the bracket. So the playoff bracket, Washington beat NC State by nine, and they take us on now in the Rose Bowl. On the other side of the bracket would be Kansas. I would love to play Kansas State, because you know who went to Kansas State? Glenn Brazil. Stanford, Virginia Tech, Georgia, Oregon. Okay, Stanford, Virginia Tech, I'm not worried about, but Georgia, Oregon is a little scary. All right, let's take one last look at our roster before we head into this game. Cedric Jackson, Shaquille Dallas, Glenn Cadu, Christian Tillman, and Bobby Tomzak are our top five players. Then it's Pete Maje, Keenan Keaton, Kareem Poe, Brady Yates, and AJ Boyette. And then there's our senior stud wide receiver, Darius Buck. And a little bit further down is the Heisman winner. Well, about to be Heisman winner, Travis Prude. Can we talk about why my D-tackle is having such a spectacular season? I'd like to learn about this. Gage Wood's not even the best D-tackle on his team. He's a sophomore. There's got to be something I'm not seeing here. He's got star dev trait. He's got overall solid ratings, but mentals. He has D-lineman rally platinum. Tackles for loss increase the confidence of other D-linemen, and he has so many TFLs on the season. That might have a factor. He's also got recoup and duress. Increases pressure effects on quarterback. You just keep doing what you're doing, buddy. All right, Washington on the clock. I'm putting those alts back on. We're looking, we're feeling real good in these alternate uniforms. Oh, are we home field for this? Oh, that's the Rose Bowl. Sorry, guys. Just let me be a casual for a second. It's an outdoor game. This is late in the season. I'm kind of glad that we got good weather. Rose Bowl. Let's see what this looks like at kickoff. Iowa's got three. Washington's got three. Iowa's got 10. Washington's got 10. 17, 17, 24, 17, 24, 24. I want to see this one. It's nice to have my input, but when you build a program like this, you want to see them succeed without the cheese. Beautiful throw, Travis. Not that I'm pulling out cheese plays or anything, but you know, it's just different when they win it like this. Travis Prude, laser beam! <gasps> A fumble on the one and Washington has the ball! Oh my God, that might've been inches from crossing. That's huge. Oh, we have to stop Washington right here, right now. Come on, Iowa. Stars all across that defense. It's a handoff up the middle, and guess who? Gage Wood. The Lombardi Award winner, the best defensive player in the nation, Gage Wood. Second and 11. Motion the tight end over. It's got to be another run. There it is. There's the handoff to the back. Who snakes out? Gentlemen. Oh, Kareem Poe. No. He's one of the better players on our team. Gets injured there. I hope it's not too bad. That's a huge mistake. How we let that up right there is crazy. Read option to the quarterback. I'd love to see a fumble myself. I need ya, I need ya, I need ya. Handoff. Oh, we almost had him. Third and inches. Come on, stuff it. You know it's a run, boys. Stuff it. It's a read option. He does get it. They're just gashing us right now. Motion bubble. That's a nice play. Oh, it's a really nice play. He's out of bounds. Get home! Markel Pryor, the senior, with a big sack. We needed that. Now we got a second and 18. They're in field goal range. It's the fourth quarter, but that was a big play. Do it again. Do it again. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That was underthrown. That's a touchdown. We, we've got some trouble with our man coverage right now. Coach, you've got to go in zone. These boys are getting cooked. Third and 18. He doesn't see anything until now. They don't make it any easier than that. Down seven. I was almost in the red zone. 24 to 31. We're five wide. Empty backfield. Hey, that's why we got one of the best O-lines in the nation, though, right? Second and four. Cedric Jackson is, like, my favorite Iowa player of all time. Auto-generated Cedric Jackson. Yucky run play. Big broken tackle, but no more fumbles, Iowa. Third and three. Travis unloads. You've got to get there. That's not a first. It's fourth and one. Do you pass this ball? Fourth and one. Clock's ticking. It's a pass. Find the check down. He does. First and goal, timeout Iowa. Down by seven in the Rose Bowl. Is this gonna be a go for two scenario once again? That would scare me so much, but I'd love to watch it happen. First and goal. Over the middle, caught! It's caught by the tight end. Please don't call a timeout and switch it. Just kick it. Washington has three timeouts. You hit the PAT. It's 31 to 31. Dude, that fumble on the goal line. I mean, we could have put the game away with that fumble on the goal line, but now it's 31-31. Washington has all three timeouts. They just need a field goal. They're gonna start out with a handoff. But tell you what, they can run that ball like crazy. They only gotta get to about the 40. They don't need much here. Second and one, this one's a pass. Oh, thrown and caught. And he's not in field goal range yet, but they're getting closer and closer. Unloads, intercepted! Intercepted by Bobby Tomzak! That's my Cooper DeGene! That's my Jackie Robinson! 
31 to 31, Iowa interception. Wait a minute. Now we just need field goal range. Two timeouts remain. What's the play here? Travis, no interceptions, buddy. Only the easiest throws of your goddamn life. End zone. Or the touchdown. The Hawkeyes take a seven point lead in the Rose Bowl. 23 seconds left. Washington's only got a timeout. Oh my God. Oh my God. One of the greatest plays I've witnessed. The pick into that. 38 to 31, we need good coverage on the return and we got it. A few seconds burnt. Washington is, is in virtual Hail Mary because you have to score a touchdown. You've got 19 seconds. You've only got one timeout. That or you gotta get a first down every throw. Step up. Oh, get him down. Damn, he tried to push forward. I respect it, but they burned their timeout, which is a little shocking. They got the first, they didn't need to burn that. Now you gotta go yard. Good pressure, he's gotta throw it away. Nine seconds. You got, probably got two plays left. Two plays left, if you mess this up, you only got one. One play left. Five seconds left, third and 10. This is true Hail Mary. You guys remember Old Dominion? I've seen this get converted. So this game ain't over. Three man rush, he throws quick. That was the worst decision I've ever seen. It's over. This ball game is over. A nice stat pad, but Iowa wins the Rose Bowl, wins the first round of the college football playoffs. Full sim, full sim out of Travis Prude. We win the Rose Bowl, take that trophy home. But we're not done yet, boys. We are not done. 446 yards and five touchdowns out of Prude. What a game. <laughs> Look who we're taking on. Taking on the Kansas State Wildcats. Now we're far removed from the Glenn Brazil era, right? Like Glenn Brazil is no longer on Kansas State, but I do still want to see what the roster looks like. So Kansas State's best player is a, a raw 97, John Ebucam. Whoa. With only star dev, you got to 97? Holy shit. That's the highest raw overall I've ever seen. With the boost, they got some other good players as well. Two right ends, middle linebacker, guard center, two really good wide receivers. Three actually. 90, 89, 88. Who's their quarterback? Walt Ivy, an 81 overall scrambler. Okay. They're ranked lower than Washington was, so it's time for Kansas State, boys. And you know damn well what uniforms I'm going. We haven't lost in the alternates. All right, taking on Kansas State. I'm going to play the moments on this one. Eesh, and they're in the red zone here. I am needed. Uh, it's a handoff left side. Good hits. Second to nine, it's another run. Absolutely swallowed up. Let's hold him to three. Ooh, slip screen. I'm over the top of this though. Oh no, I gotta make that tack with the DB. Tom Zach is little. He had that huge interception before, but he's small. Third and six, they're bringing me in to keep this drive alive. And I'm gonna do what Prude does best, but I'm gonna have to dive for this one. First and 10, Darius Buck press coverage. Oh my God, he might have him. That was supposed to be a fade. I tried to throw that up as a fade, but I bulleted it on accident. Looks like we got two field goals though. Dude, I swear sometimes I take over and we, we're literally like objectively worse. Third and 18, I've got this. Oh, that's fine. Just gotta make a big tackle, we go low. All right, after that big stop there, it's first and 10, a little two minute drill action. See if I can slow down a little bit and just make the right read every time. Battle, seven yards. Oh, beautiful. Tight end for three. If I could just play smart and slow and steady like this all the time, we'd be in we'd be in business, right? First and ten. Ooh, easily. Hey, battles a receiving back, baby. A little juke. We're looking good. Ooh, blitz. Gonna leave the middle open. Rooks. Oh, I was hoping I could catch that in stride. Third and seven. I kind of do like the slip screen call here. This is a little risky, but we are in field goal range. So very least we can get that. That looks very open. I gotta follow my blocks. Take me home. Great third and seven slip screen call was huge. Big, big play, boys. It's all field goals today. Uh-oh, he gets through. We barely get that ball off. Third and 10. This will determine if this is a field goal or not. Oh my God, that coverage is so good. I had B too. Shit. 36 yard field goal, I'll step in to kick it. I gotta, I gotta earn some of these points, right? Beauty. Beauty. <laughs> field goals are no joke, dude, but that's in. It's nine to three, it's a weird score. I don't like anything about it. After half, it's nine to three. We've got the ball. A Y stick here. Double team on the left side. Love to see that. Ooh, and look who's open. It's Darius Buck breaking a tackle. It's a very defensive game here. Very defensive. We're 22 for 28, but we have 100 yards passing. Let's check down Nation. First and 10. Oh, yikes. I'm not giving up on Enrique Battle. I'm giving him another one. Oh, my God. That was the worst run play I've ever called. They knew exactly what we were doing. We're going straight into a pass here. Oh, I see you. I see you. Branham! <laughs> he 
took the hit, but still got in. That's how we fumbled last game, but it works out this time. Looks like Kansas State might have just scored quick. No, just a field goal. 17 to 6. Really good opportunity. Third and three. We just got to pick this up. Oh, they blitz right over top of it. Beautiful. Another third down. Head into the fourth quarter with an 11 point lead in the playoffs. Third and six. Oh, blitz out of the middle linebacker. Clear. Oh, I got, I did get that off. And we did catch it. But it's not enough. Oh, we're going for it. Hell yeah, we're going for it. Do I have any options? I want an option. Let's go speed option. Fuck yeah. Fourth and one. Oh, this speed option's not the play here. Read option is though. Just give this up the middle. Look at the set. This is such a weird set they're in. No way, you didn't get that. They scored, went for two and didn't get it. Oh my God, I thought that was free. Second and 10, no blitz, three-man rush. Oh, that's a, that's a beautiful wheel route. We just gotta milk some clock, boys. Oh, it's an injury timeout, so the clock is not moving here. Oh, cut it up, Enrique. Beauty. Since they went for two and didn't get it, a field goal here extends my lead to eight. I don't wanna set up for a field goal, but... One hate one right now. We got the two-minute warning coming up. We're going to cut this back. Great vision. One first down, boys. One first down puts this away. Second and nine. Daddle. Okay. Third and five. Third and five. Oh, ho, ho, ho. there's so many options. Just get down. Timeout, Iowa. Oh, is it really ball game? I don't think it is. It's got me kneeling, but I... Okay, it shot that thing over. I didn't realize, but it's over. 17 to 12, Iowa hangs on. That was not our prettiest game. In fact, that was a classic Iowa game. Travis Prude, 200 yards, two touchdowns. And most importantly, we move on, but we definitely have not played our toughest game yet. Washington into Kansas State. There's a juggernaut ahead of us in the playoffs, and it's gonna be for the national championship. It could be Stanford, Virginia Tech, Alabama, or Oregon. No, Georgia or Oregon. I think Oregon would be scary. We haven't beat Oregon actually ever as Iowa. Semi-final playoff game winner. And that leaves just one game between us and Salvation, and one game between us and a 16-0 season. You couldn't write a better script, could you? We've seen Oregon about three or four times, and we've lost every single time. Now, we saw them in the regular season and uh, one of them they put 63 on us but now we're first in the nation this is a different Iowa team and hopefully a different Oregon team just to check back in on everything before the national championship our coach is stacked out master motivator recruiter and tactician master motivator is for all of these XP boosts recruiter obviously landed us a lot of those prospects we needed and then tactician is all of these upgrades actually during gameplay so getting pass block and impact block spin and juke moves throw on the run it's all been incredible helpful and the roster I know you guys have seen it but one final look man Cedric Jackson this guy's gonna go down in Iowa history and if you look at this squad there are nine players 90 overall or better and then, I mean Bobby Tomzak made one of the sickest plays that we've seen a huge interception to beat Washington and of course Travis Prude love you buddy our journey's coming to a close gentlemen we just gotta beat Oregon in the national championship. Let's take a look at their roster though. Oregon's definitely no joke. Their best player is their quarterback. 96 overall with so many gold abilities. Jesus. Cordell Armstrong. Titus Keys, their next best. They got two stud middle linebackers. Great outside linebackers. Halfbacks at 90 overall. Wide receivers, 297 speed guys, but not completely stacked. It's definitely the best team we've faced. This is, this is our true test. The year is 2031 and the college football national championship is the Iowa Hawkeyes, the best team in the nation, taking on number six Oregon Ducks. Iowa had a bye and then two interesting games, Washington and Kansas State. So although Oregon is ranked lower, many people believe that this is gonna be the best matchup college football has seen. Oregon is led by their 96 overall quarterback, Cordell Armstrong. Iowa is led by senior and potential Heisman winner, Travis Prude. And all the hard work, all the rebuilding, and everything we've done leads to this game right here with a split stadium. Ducks and Hawkeyes, there's a whole lot of yellow. Oregon's got a 90 overall, Iowa's got an 86. It's a night game, and you bet your ass I'm playing the key moments. It's third and seven, we are in field goal range. But this is the Natty boys. We want a little bit more than a field goal, yeah? Looping blitz out of the linebacker. If we can get it into Witted, he should get it! A huge spin! Massive conversion. Now we find ourselves in the red zone in the national championship. We're gonna go play action here. I think they're expecting a run. Let's see if we can hold up here. Can I roll out right? I can. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Risky! Caught! Darius Buck in his senior season! Oh, sketch ball! We're gonna go to battle. Elijah Battle. 
Looking to punch this in. Good blocks. Awkward running, but it's six points either way. Elijah Battle is in the end zone, and he's getting excited. Oregon fans are in their seats. Iowa's going crazy. Now defense needs my help. It's first and goal. Iowa's knocking on the door, but hopefully nobody's home. Klutz. It's a Wildcat. Oh, shit. That's Wildcat. Higgins, get ready. Does he pass it? No, it's a counter. Tillman's there. Oh, Oregon goes Wildcat on the goal line. Doesn't work as planned, and now they're in slot offset. I know that this quarterback is just a monster. It's another run. It's so bad. Oregon's going the wrong way right now. We know this is a pass. What can we do about it, boys? That's the question. I'm here. I'm here. Gage. Is it Gage Wood? A fumble. A fumble. Iowa ball! Oregon with a disaster class! Now Iowa's looking at a third and eight tier. Prude in the backfield. He can roll right. He's really good on his legs. I think we're just gonna take this. Travis Prude, bend the corner. Oregon is distraught right now. We have a chance to get some serious momentum. We're gonna pull out the RPO read bubble. This goes to Witted if he's there. Good blocks. Great blocks. Witted! Oh, why are you carrying the ball like that, buddy? That's some big balls in the natty. 14-0, Iowa. Oh my God, what? Oregon put up 14 uncontested. I was never given an opportunity to play. Wait a minute, it's all tied up now. Good blocks there. Can he clear? He doesn't need to, because Travis Prude's gonna break a tackle and get out of bounds. I'll score as much as is needed for us to win. I can't believe Oregon scored. They must have been huge plays then. That's the only way I don't get to step in. Steps in the middle, clears. Darius Buck, the senior, five yards. Darius Buck has some great abilities, like sure hands, which just come in so big. I'm gonna give him an out route here. I'm hoping this is, it's not main coverage. Oh, but the spin move off the D-tackle. Prude! Horrifying dive. But Prude doesn't fumble. I rarely see Travis Prude fumble. And they don't make touchdowns easier than this. You're going to need a lot more linemen down there if you want to stop that. You just handed me the touchdown there. It's 14-21. to 21. Defense needs my help again. I don't know if we can pray for another miracle like last time. First and 10. Oh, I was just about to say that got behind me. Oh, there's a slug out. First and 10. 30 seconds. Give it up to my offense for getting themselves here. I'll just go battle. It's gonna break a tackle. Second and five. Oh, 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 wait a minute. Clock, 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 gentlemen. Should have spiked that probably, but it's second and five. It's all right, it's all right, stay strong. Oh, a blitz off to Darius Buck. That's exactly who I want to ball out, man. He's been with this program for five years. Same as Travis Prude. Both redshirted their freshman year. They deserve this. 28 to 21, it's third and three. They're stepping me in for a big play and I'm sending a blitz. Come on, boys. Oh, it's a handoff. Bodies! Oregon's gonna punt. 28 to 21, we're back on defense, empty on offense. Now they're passing. I'm gonna put Exum in a flat. I don't think they run this, they don't. Easy seam! Tom Zach gets a huge hit on him, but it's not enough. Oregon moves into the red zone. Wildcat again, just be ready for some tomfoolery. Do they actually toss this one? It's an option every time, I gotta be there, Tom Zach! A lucky broken tackle moves him out of bounds. Armstrong's back in. I don't think they run this. I just don't see it. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. That's why I didn't think they'd run it, because it ain't there. I'm sending a blitz. Najee's going in a blitz here. There's a motion on the halfback. I got these. I got these, and the blitz pays off. Oregon's taking a field goal. The game is on the line. Make a stop here. 24 to 28, Oregon ball. I'm sending that same blitz. Dallas is hot right now. I dare you to hand that off. Same motion. Really similar play here. I've got the halfback. Okay, good pass. Second and inches, clock's moving. I think they run this. Sending an overload blitz on the right side. They do run it. Uh-oh, bad time to send that blitz on the outside. Ooh, going mid blitz. This is our first time running man coverage in a while, but we're gonna go for it. Play over the top. He motions out. It's mid blitz. Uh oh. Tom Zach! Ooh, Tom Zach breaks it up. Bobby Tom Zach has platinum house call. I love that. Second and 10. Can I get there? No. Just short. Keep in mind they score this. We go down. I'm gonna hop on Pat here for the run. And it is. Dude, that halfback's gotta be gassed. Oregon has to score a touchdown here. I mean, they don't have to, but they really have to. Second and six. Couple short ones. God, they're just tearing us up right now. Is it a run? I'm bringing Klutz down for the potential run here. No. Uh-oh. But now I vacated my spot. I'm back to it. Engage Wood. Good pressure. No sack, but good pressure. I'm gonna send Tom Zach on a blitz. Delayed corner blitz. Checks down. Ugly tackle, but it's a tackle. Third and nine, wait a minute. Wait a minute, boys, third and nine. They have to score. They can't just set up for this field goal. Do they snap this? They do cover everything. 
No, gets one in the middle. Klutz, let's get ready for it. First and goal. It's an RPO! Excellent play call. And that means that it all comes down to the Hawkeyes here. We can kick a field goal to push this OT, but you know what we're going for. We're going for the end zone. Start out second and seven. Honestly, in college football right now, we have all the time in the world. We got three timeouts, first downs, everything. No reason to rush this. Let's call our best play every time. Second and seven. Just be smart and slow and throw passes like that. Lennon, you can bend it. So well. Stay in bounds. Just go down. Minute 30 on the clock. That's a massive pickup, but it means nothing unless we get in this end zone. We don't want to leave Oregon with a bunch of time here. We want to be really, really smart about this. I'm going to do a Texas drag combo. A favorite in the game. I could take that. I like it in your hands better than in Prude's hands. Oregon brought out the RPO, and shit, I'm kind of feeling the exact same way right now. Let's see how this linebacker reacts. Oh, we... What on earth? What are you guys doing? This is the biggest play of the game. I might even go for it, given the opportunity. Third and six, right in the middle is Lennon, and he pushes forward. Javante Lennon, the senior tight end, has been instrumental on this final drive. We're going to go with a halfback counter on first and ten. Going to get some really good blocks. Wide receiver came down for the block of a lifetime. We're using this clock very efficiently. It's still moving. We've got three timeouts. We cannot give Oregon the chance to score. Another run play battle. Take six yards and we'll call a timeout. I think it might be time for slip screen. Slip screen has been a really money play for us. Yep, I like this a lot. Second and six. Oregon hasn't seen this yet. Slip screen is open. Blockers downfield. Battle. Gets to the three. Let's use it one timeout here. Probably didn't need to use it, but it's 31-28. I want to see what they come out in. If we come out in a shotgun set that has inside zone, I'm hoping that'll just kind of widen out. Widen out those lines. Oh my goodness. That's exactly what I'm looking for. This has touchdown written all over it. First and goal. 28 seconds. Battle is in the end zone of the national championship, but we've got a hold. Big PAT will move us up by four. That gives Oregon two timeouts and 26 seconds for the national championship. That was a massive touchdown. First and 10, kick return takes two seconds off the clock. Whip, dude, Armstrong's gotta go. <gasps> Intercepted, get down, get down. The national championship ends with an Iowa interception. And we're in victory formation in the natty. Cordell Armstrong with the biggest play of his life. The Iowa Hawkeyes in 2031 are national champions. Travis Prude, what a game. Elijah Battle, what a game. I feel like so many players for Iowa came up so big in that national championship. What massive, massive plays to win the game 35 to 31. And gentlemen, one thing is for certain, the Iowa Hawkeyes are an offensive juggernaut and I don't wanna hear anything else. Travis Prude wins it. Dude, that RPO play that Oregon pulled out there to score that touchdown was so, so big. Darius Buck stepped up. What a beautiful, beautiful shot. And there's always some homeless man standing in front of my fucking national championship trophy. 16 and 0 and I gotta see that final play. Oh, it was Shaquille Dallas. The final play of the national championship looked a little something like this, boys. Here's Armstrong's view. There's Shaquille Dallas just waiting. He's trying to float this over his head, but he doesn't get a hold of it. That might have been, if that's a better ball and it floats up over, he might have him but Shaquille Dallas with the biggest catch of his life. And Shaquille Dallas, you gotta get down here, buddy. You gotta get down. The Iowa fans are going crazy. And that's the last play at the national championship. Are you kidding me? Yeah, talk that shit, Shaquille. He's waving him by. Said bye-bye, Oregon. Although this final drive was huge too. The slip screen. It was honestly all Elijah battle on this final drive. The slip screen into the inside zone. Oh, sorry, Enrique battle. I'm so sorry. Been calling him Elijah. Elijah's his nickname, you guys. You wouldn't know that because you're not the head coach of the program. It's whatever. Let me see it, baby. Congratulations. You have won the college football playoff national championship. Well, now that we've won the national championship, let's check in on records. I feel like we had to have beaten some like serious Iowa records. There's just no way. So career records that we actually beat. So Travis Prude of Iowa, he now has the most passing yards in Iowa history. Darius Buck has the most receptions. 
Travis Prude has the most passing touchdowns. And those are the only three we were able to get. We didn't get anything for our shot running back, unfortunately. We didn't get receiving yards either. But Darius Buck wasn't always so involved on the offense. He was getting about five, 600 receiving yards a season, so he wasn't gonna hit 2,900. Gage Wood now has the Big Ten single season sack record with 18. That's awesome to see. And as far as just our program is concerned, Travis Prude has passing yards, of course. Seth Whites gets receptions. Can't forget about him. Travis Prude passing touchdowns and Seth White's touchdown catches. He did have one really nuclear season. And we don't have, wow, this is really interesting. We don't have a single, single game record. Travis Prude came so close to this. He had 548 in the game, just a little bit short, but wow. Iowa in the 90s was uh, going off in single games. And as a coach, we were three and two in the playoffs. One national championship, of course, a conference championship. We did send a guy to the first round. That was our stud middle linebacker in the first year, but sent 16 total to the draft. We never had a top five recruiting class, but I, I honestly am just not good enough at recruiting yet. I need to understand it better before I'm gonna get one of these. And obviously it's easier if you're, you know, Oregon. But still, I really don't have an excuse to not have this. I'm a, I was a four-star program and at multiple times four and a half stars. I should have had at least probably one top five recruit. Next up, I'm gonna sim an entire season on full autopilot, see if we can run it back. In our full auto sim season, we go nine and four. 15th in the nation, doesn't look like we made the playoffs. We did not make the playoffs, unfortunately. Oregon did, and they lost to Syracuse. The national championship is Syracuse, West Virginia. That's pretty cool to see. Now, I didn't expect this to be a great season. We lost our senior quarterback. We lost Darius Buck. Uh, looks like Andy McClellan was the starter, who threw 29 and four, 2000, not bad at all. And it looks like uh, Vantrese Witherspoon, our backup, was actually getting some significant reps. 710 yards. Dude, Ethan Orndoff, he earned it, bro. He made some serious plays. He was a freshman when he did that? He's a sophomore now. He had 1,082 yards and seven. Bradley Witted had 12. And Rooks is still out there. 86 overall. It's, it's kind of funny. Your wide receiver one in TCU Air Raid performs the worst. Like, they, they get the least reps. Because he's our best wide receiver, and we consistently saw this. That's something to keep in mind. Defensively, 10 and a half sacks out of the GOAT. Gage Wood, who's injured? No, Gage. Darren Tinker had nine, six out of Christian Tillman, who's an 89 overall. So I, I think I can confidently say that we're leaving this team in very good hands. Bobby Tomzak's the best player on this team, followed up by Glenn Cadu and Pat Maje. He was awesome. I really, I really liked all these guys, man. I feel like I, I feel like I got a close bond with them. But after winning the national championship, it's finally time for us to hang it up. Jackie Robinson, Iowa Hawkeyes legendary coach is finally retiring from college football. This was an amazing rebuild. I hope you guys enjoyed because this was so much fun for me. And frankly, it's a lot easier than Old Dominion. Hey, I love you guys. I can't wait to see you in the next one. Peace.